ইসমিল্লা <tries> Alhamdulillah, we have been given the blessed opportunity of witnessing another month of Sha'ban, which is the month of Allah's mercy and pleasure. Hafaftahu bi rahmati wa ridwan. Allah has covered this month with His pleasure and mercy. I thought uh, it might be good to have a little introduction to Munajat Sha'baniyyah. And as you know, this is a very highly regarded whispered prayer that our Imams alayhim salam used to recite. Uh, this is mentioned by several ulama in their books For example, the late Sayyid ibn Tawus in his book, Al-Iqbal, the late Allama Majlisi in his Biharul Anwar, Samahiji in As-Sahifatu Al-Alawiyya, and of course, Sheikh Abbas Al-Ghummi in his Mafatih Al-Janan, they all have mentioned this munajat, this whispered prayer from Amir Al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, Of course, none of them has mentioned the complete chain of narration. But due to its content and due to the high regard that the ulama have always had for this munajat, so it has not been questioned or objected by any scholar. And the late Imam Khomeini in many places on several occasions emphasized on this munajat And in one of his sayings, he said that uh, there are many important mystical points that one can understand from the Quran and whispered prayers of imams. And then in particular, he mentioned Munajat al-Sha'baniyyah. And he said, philosophers, mystics may be able to understand some aspects of these whispered prayers but if someone wants to really understand must be a person who has himself achieved a high level of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he can have a taste he can have an experience of what he says so a person who is a wayfarer a traveler towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has reached some levels, not exactly what is mentioned in Munajat, but at least some level close to what is mentioned in Munajat can have some grasp of the ideas in Munajat. But someone who has just studied philosophy or mysticism may not be able to understand lots of uh, points which are there. In another place, uh, the late Imam Khomeini said something very important. He said, This Munajat Sha'baniyyah is one of the whispered prayers that if someone pays attention to it and follows it and reflects on it, he can reach somewhere. He can achieve some levels of perfection. And the late uh, Mirza Jawad Agha Maliki Tabrizi, as you know, was one of the teachers of Imam Khomeini, especially in ethics and spirituality, He says, this is a well-known munajat. And he says, وَفِيهُ عُلُومٌ جَمَّةٌ And there are lots of information and lots of knowledge 
in this monajat about how to uh, talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to whisper to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the etiquette and manner of talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to pray, how to ask for forgiveness. And he refers to one of ulama, he doesn't mention the name, but he says one of the ulama has made a commentary on some parts of the munajat. He doesn't mention who, but the late Sheikh Agha Buzurg Tehrani mentions that the passage, Elahi Habli Kamala Lin Ilaik, which comes towards the end of Munajat, has been commented and interpreted by the late Muhammad Kazim Hussein Rashti. Imam Khomeini was asking great ulama to comment on this Munajat, and two of the students of Imam Khomeini have actually made commentary. Ayatollah Mazahiri and Ayatollah Muhammad Gilani have made commentary on this munajat. So it's a very special gift, a very special uh, jewelry from the treasures of Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam. And I hope that inshallah you will be able to reflect and understand this munajat and other munajat that we have received from Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam. I just start reflecting quickly on some of the sentences at the beginning of this munajat hoping that inshallah uh, we would have some opportunity in future to continue it starts with this bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad as you know this is a very uh, established etiquette that we should try to start and end our duas our prayers with sending salutation to the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt and inshallah when we cover our du'as with salutation then Allah would accept from cover to cover the first salawat the ending salawat and whatever is in between so Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad وَاسْمَعْ دُعَائِ إِذَا دَعَوْتُكْ وَاسْمَعْ نِدَائِ إِذَا نَادَيْتُكْ وَأَقْبِلْ عَلَيَّ إِذَا نَاجَيْتُكْ In my view, this refers to three conditions of the person who calls Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O oh Allah, please listen to my call when I call you, when I pray. Dua is a, a middle position. If we want to consider the distance between the one who calls Allah and Allah, so we can have three conditions. One is that someone is far. So this is neda. Neda is normally for calling someone in distance. And then we have dua, someone who is near, not very far. But then we have munajat, someone who is very close, as if we are uh, touching. So for example, I am speaking directly from my mouth to his ear. So dua is middle, neda is when there is distance, and najwa is when it's very close. Of course, these three depend on the condition of the one who calls, not on the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not changing his distance. It's not that sometimes he goes away or, you know, he travels, so he is not close to us. He is always as he is. But depending on how close we are to him, then our experience would be different. Sometimes we feel that we should call him, in the form of neda. You may remember this hadith uh, from Prophet Musa, Allah Nabi Nawal, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, are you close? Are you close so that I whisper to you or you are far so that I call you? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ana jalisu man zakarani. 
I am sitting next to the one who remembers me. As soon as you remember me, I am with you and sitting next to you. So there is no need to call if you remember him. So depending on different conditions that we have, we have different ways to address Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what is important is in all these different conditions, we want his attention. We want his answer. We want his acceptance. وَاسْمَعَ الدُّعَاءِ إِذَا دعوتك. If I call you, I manage to call you, please listen to me. وَاسْمَعَ النَّدَاءِ إِذَا نَادَيْتُكَ And if I am in a condition that I feel I have somehow lost the touch with you, somehow I have lost the connection with you, and with difficulty want to restore connection, so as someone who is far is calling his friend, please at that time also listen to me. وَاسْمَعَ النَّدَاءِ إِذَا نَادَيْتُكَ But if I am very close to you and I'm whispering to you, so not only please listen to me, come to me. So this is the best condition that you whisper to him because you are very close to him and then you want him to come towards you. For sure, the one who comes to you, uh, towards you has already heard you. So involves listening and uh, hearing you. فَقَدْ حَرَبْتُ إِلَيْكِ I have escaped, I have uh, run away from anything other than you. I am a person faced with lots of challenges, lots of difficulties, with some enemies. I have managed to detach myself from everything and come to you. Like a person that, for example, thieves or murderers are after him, he runs away and he finds a good, a kind person and says, you know, I have run away and they are after me, please help me. I am not in a normal situation. I am not in a relaxed and comfortable situation. I'm desperate. I am really in need of your help. فَقَدْ حَرَبْتُ إِلَيْكَ Of course, this by itself is a great achievement that someone understands that there is no one to help him other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he manages to run away from anything other than Allah. Because unfortunately, many times we start enjoying ourselves with our enemies or with the attractions of dunya. We don't run away. Indeed, we go after them. This is for a person who has achieved this kind of understanding that he knows anything other than Allah. It would be an obstacle, would be a problem for him. So he runs away from everything and anyone other than Allah and wants to go to Allah and take refuge with him. وَبَقَفْتُ بَيْنَ يَدَيْكَ Now I'm standing in front of you. So I have managed to come to this stand, uh, distance. I have come to this position, this stance. So please help me. When you go to a person who can offer refuge, then what is important is that you reach him. Or for example, if someone is ill, if he reaches doctor, he reaches hospital. If someone is uh, dying because of hunger, if he reaches someone who has food, so he has finished his job. He says, I have come to you. Now it's your turn to help me. وَقَفْتُ بَيْنَ يَدَاكِ means I have done my part. I have come to you. I've managed to run away from anything behind me and come to you. Now it's your turn. فَقَدْ حَرَبْتُ إِلَيْكَ وَوَقَفْتُ بَيْنَ يَدَيْكَ But sometimes people who stand before a helper, before an alim, before a guide, they stand but in a very relaxed way. As if they don't really need him. Sometimes it's just a matter of formality. I go to an alim and say, you know, I'm in need of your guidance, but deep in my heart, I think that I know everything myself. I go to a doctor, but I think I am healthy. I have no problem. This is not good. When we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stand before him, we should know that we are in 
absolute need, we totally and entirely depend on his help. We are desperate. Not just as a person who is uh, a visitor or a person who is, uh, you know, just relaxed. Mustakin and lack. I am completely needy. Mustakin even is stronger than miskin. Miskin is the person that whose need has made him unable to move, desperate. And mustakin is even more needy. So I have used all my energy. I have exhausted myself and reached here. I cannot go any further. I cannot even go one step further. Please help me. Please rescue me. Mustakin and lack. Where else I can go? I have finished everything that I have. Now I run out of power and energy to go anywhere else. Mustakin and lack. Mutawarran ilayk. And humbly beseech you for helping me. And also I know that you have everything that I need. So I have not come here just by chance or accident. I have come to the right place. I have come here because I knew that whatever I need you have. I have hope in your reward. And you know everything about me. You know all my hidden and unhidden needs. Everything you know about me. You know how desperate I am. You know how much I suffer. There is nothing hidden from you. You know my condition. At the same time, you know my request. And you know what is inside my heart. Indeed, Allah says that even before I understand what is happening in my heart, He knows. Sometimes we need to think, maybe for hours, sometimes for days, what is really in my heart. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything that is going on in my heart. And not only He knows everything about me at the present, he also knows my future. My situation in this world of changes and transformation, and also my situation in future, in the hereafter, after I die, all are known to you. I myself have no clue. I don't know what is going to happen to me tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, let alone what is going to happen to me after I die. I am ignorant. But you know everything. And you know what difficult stations I have to go through. All those stations and mawaqif which we have to go through before we die, during death, after we die, before resurrection, after we are resurrected. Only Allah knows how many different challenges we have to go through. He knows everything. So, He knows my need more than me. You also know what I am going to say, what I am going to disclose, what I am going to explain to you. So, when I am going to ask you something in the coming sentences it's not because you don't know no you know everything but it's a matter of politeness it's an etiquette to mention your request we shouldn't be sometimes lazy and say because allah knows everything so there is no need to ask him he knows my situation Yes, sometimes for some people who have reached very high level of closeness to Allah and tabakkul, trusting Allah, sometimes they don't mention 
because of some adab, of some etiquette, some politeness that is not applicable to at least a person like me. So we shouldn't compare ourselves to someone like Ibrahim, for example, alayhi salam, that on some occasions he didn't ask. For most of us, we should always ask. We should always mention our request by our tongue. This is a matter of politeness. This is a matter of showing that you are really needy. You really appreciate Allah's help. And also to make sure that we are not lazy. So you know what I am going to say by my words and what I am going to explain about my request. Ma uridu an abhi min mantaqi. I'm going to disclose about my speech, my words, and atafavahu bihi min talibati. And again, I speak by my mouth about my request. Wa arjuhu You also know what I need, what I want for my destiny, for my fate, for my future, for my end. And وَقَدْ جَرَتْ مَقَادِيرُكَ عَلَيَّ يَا سَيِّدِي فِي مَا يَكُونُ مِنِّي إِلَىٰ آخِرُ عُمْرِي مِنْ سَرِيرَةِ وَعَلَانِيَةِ This sentence is very important and we shouldn't misunderstand this. I know that your measures have embraced me, have applied to me till end of my life. So nothing about my sarira or alanya, nothing about my hidden or my public aspects of life are outside your decisions, your will, and your decree. It's, everything is covered by your decree. This doesn't mean that we believe in predestination. This doesn't mean that everything is already fixed and there is no way to change it. If that was the case, so why we are asking Allah for help? No. It means that I know that my all life, all my affairs are totally covered and embraced by your plans. You are the person who is my Lord. You are the person on, his, on whose will and on whose decision every aspect of my life lies. So I have not come to a stranger. I have not come to someone who is not in charge of my affairs, but I ask him, please go and speak to the one who is in charge. I have come to you you know everything about me and also you are in charge of everything about me. So I have come to the right place and right person. Everything that is going to happen to me till end of my life is part of your whole plan for me and other human beings. So if I want some change, I have to ask you. I don't have anyone else to ask. Who can change my... Uh, Destiny other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَدْ جَرَتْ مَقَادِيرُكَ عَلَيَّ يَا سَيِّدِي Not in a sense of being predestined and cannot be changed, but in a sense that Allah has an inclusive plan and everything that we do falls under His plans and under the measures that He has provided us with. But which direction to follow, that's up to you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فِيمَا يَكُونُ مِنِّي إِلَىٰ آخِرُ عُمْرِي مِنْ سَرِيرَةِ وَعَلَانِيَةِ وَبِيَدِكَ لَا بِيَدْ غَيْرِكَ زِيَادَةِ وَنَقْصِ وَنَفْعِ وَذَرِّ I know that it is not fixed. It can be changed. If it was predestined, it was not possible to change. We know that it can change. But who can change it? This is the question. It's only you that who can change it. It's only in your hand. You are the only one who can change. You can change everything about me. No one else. So, this gives us great hope that still it's not too late to change. 
You can change everything even if most of your life has already expired. Still he can change. He can bring all the benefits and interest to me. Or he can let me suffer. He can add or he can take away his blessings from me. بِيَدِكَ لَا بِيَدِ غَيْرِكَ زِيَادَتِي وَنَقْصِي You can add to what I have. You can increase your blessings or you can take away. You can reduce. وَنَقْصِي وَنَفْعِي وَذَرِّي So زِيَادَتِي وَنَقْصِي come together. نَفْعِي وَذَرِّي come together. Benefit and harm. You can change those things that benefit me or those things that harm me. You can bring those that benefit me and keep away what harms me or do opposite. You can keep away from me those which are beneficial and bring what is, what is harmful. Ilahi in haramtani faman dalladi yarzuquni O Allah if you deprive me if you ignore me, if you don't pay attention to me, if you disregard me, who else is going to provide me with sustenance, with everything that I need? Sustenance is not only food, everything that I need for my physical, spiritual, psychological health and progress is my sustenance. It can be food, it can be medicine, it can be water, it can be knowledge, it can be wisdom, it can be many different gifts that we need for our progress, for our health, for our success. If you don't give me, who else can give me? You are the only giver of the sustenance. You are the only sustainer. If you don't help me, if you abandon me, if you forsake me, فَمَنْ ذَلَّذِي يَنْصُرُنِي Who is the one who is going to help me? First of all, no one can help me independent from you. And secondly, no one dares to help me if it is your decision that I should be forsaken. If a person who is very powerful, imagine a king or a ruler, doesn't help someone and everyone knows that his decision is that this person should not be helped. So who dares to come to you and even ask you, how are you? They all forget you and ignore you because they are afraid of their own life or their position. So no one can help me independently and no one also dares to come and ask, how is my situation if you don't want help be received by me. In khadaltani faman dalladi yansuruni. Do you think that the angels or the prophets or imams would come and help me when Allah has decided to ignore me? Do you think they can have more mercy for me and more love for me, more support for me than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If Allah decides that someone should be forsaken, that's end of that person. Ilahi, a'udhu bika min ghadabik. Now that everything relies on you, I am completely dependent on you. I am in desperate situation. I am in need. So what worries me is if you get angry with me. If you are not satisfied with me, then what can I do? You need your helper, you need the one who gives you sustenance, the one who gives you refuge to be happy with you. But if he's angry with you, if you do things that he doesn't like, if you insult him or the people who are related to him, if you declare war against him, then how can you expect help? Elahi a'udhu bika min ghadabik. I take refuge with you from your anger. I don't want you to be angry with me, of course, because of my own bad behavior, my own bad performance. Allah is not getting angry without reason. But if because of some of my bad actions you are angry with me, I am very worried. Your anger and 
the settlement or permanence of your unhappiness or your anger. Sometimes anger is coming and going away quickly. But hulul sakhatek means it's established, it's fixed. It's not a very uh, quick and fast state of anger. You know, sometimes you are angry, but it's not deeply settled and located in your heart. It's coming from the surface. So it can be solved quickly. But if someone has been deeply hurt, for example, you have killed his father or mother or children and he's angry with you, this anger is very well rooted and very well established in his heart. It's very difficult to forget that anger. And also, if it's established, then it's very difficult. And the last sentence, I don't want to speak too much. It's the last sentence for us. Of course, this is just the beginning of Munajat. Ilahi, in kuntu ghayra musta'hilin rahmatik. If I am not qualified to receive your mercy. You know, sometimes the, there are announcements that, for example, if you do this, we will give you something. You can bring, for example, something valuable, bring some gifts, do something good, and then we give you in return something. So there are people who qualify themselves for receiving mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have done something good. Now, in return, Allah gives them His mercy. But maybe I have nothing to qualify my, me for receiving His mercy. I have nothing that can qualify me to receive your rahmah. Okay. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't deserve your rahmah. If you don't give me, I cannot blame you because I don't deserve. It's not that I have done something according to your declaration or according to your offer and now you have changed your mind. If that was the case, I was able to blame. But I know that I am not qualified. But still I am hopeful. Why? Because to receive your rahmah is not only coming or dependent on my qualifications. You have also qualifications. I have no qualification now, unfortunately, because I haven't done anything good to expect your rahmah. But what about you? One of your qualifications is that you can give mercy to the people who don't deserve mercy. When you created us, did we deserve anything? Did you give us existence because we deserved? Did you give us guidance because we deserved? Did you give me all these beautiful things always and necessarily because I deserve? No, most of the time you get us without us deserving. So now, even if I'm not qualified, I still hope that you give me because of your qualities. Ilahi in kuntu ghayra musta'ahlin rahmatik fa anta ahlun an tajuda alayya bi fadl sa'atik because of the wide and all embracing and all inclusive rahmat that you have you should give me rahmat not that i should be given i don't need, uh, have any qualification but what about you for someone like you to give rahmat is natural for someone like you to give rahmah is expected. It's compatible with your qualities. But for me to demand rahmah, to deserve rahmah is not fixed. Some people may deserve, some people may not. So, if my situation is so bad that I don't deserve any rahmah, if I have not done anything to bring your rahmah towards me, so at least I know that you have such a uh, 
good quality, such a good character, that you can give rahmah to the people who don't deserve. So still, the channel must remain open. Okay, I stop here. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us in this month of forgiveness and to be pleased with us in this month of pleasure. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, our families, our community, all humanity with his pleasure, with his reward, with the coming of Imam Mahdi, ajjalallah ta'ala farajahu sharif, with forgiveness, with being able to remain always on the right path. May Allah bless all the ill people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send his unlimited rahmah to all who have passed away, especially those who have rights upon us, our parents for parents, our teachers, our ulama, the martyrs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the last moment of our life the best moment of our life. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alam.